God is good all, all the, the time. time. Let us be charitable to our <coughs> neighbor. How? By praying for them. Ask the name, get to the name. Daniel? I too. I pray for Daniel and Daniel will pray for me. Like that? Ask the name, get to the name. You are going to pray for whom? Uh, say the name loud. I pray for Daniel. Daniel is going to pray for me. Jesus Master, have mercy on Daniel. Come Holy Spirit. Some of you have no chairs to sit. Don't worry. When you stand for long, God will feel pity and something great will happen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise uh, because you are standing for the sake of God. We have one priest who have come for confession, uh, but you can't just go immediately. You have to first go collect a coupon, a number. Then you will wait for that. Confession will continue even tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Father Prince has already assured his help. So don't be preoccupied what will happen. God is going to help you. And remember, confession is not counseling. Don't go and do counseling. And when you go for confession, please only confess your sins. Don't confess the sin of your mother-in-law. <laughs> A priest cannot forgive that. You can only confess your sin. Specifically, you just say your sin. Only that. And if you need counseling, come to Rwanda. <laughs> we have, it's available and... Uh, uh, I used to do some online counseling, but uh, my schedule is very tight. We are in a new mission. We have a lot of uh, work to do because it's a new mission. That's why. But uh, the counselor is Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So look at your neighbor and say, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. With a smile. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And kindly be seated. We had a very big difficulty in our center in uh, Darlington where I was there. So we somebody told us to make a special prayer. This prayer is to recite 150 psalms continuously together. So, we have Psalms, we have 150 Psalms. So, we expose the Brasa Sacrament, it takes around 7 hours. So, we take a short break in between, but we continue to pray. First, we pray 50 Psalms, then 10 minutes break, then 50 Psalms, 10 minutes break, 50 Psalms, together, together. Reading loud 150 Psalms. When we prayed that prayer, We conclude the prayer with a thanksgiving mass. So immediately after that prayer, we got the answer. Through the letter in the box, we got an inspiration. Go and check the mailbox. We got the letter. Praise the Lord. Because God cannot be deceived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Maybe you have not tried that. Maybe you are afraid. Maybe you fear, will you ever be able to start or finish? When we do a sacrificial prayer, it has great value. As we were praying this prayer, towards the end, we had a vision. The vision was, the angels came down as we were praying. They came with the cameras and they took our photos. And they took this and immediately the photos came out. And they flew back to heaven and they put it on the walls of heaven. You know why? When we reach near the door of heaven, they will say, ah, these people's photos are there. They are supposed to be inside. Come. So we got inside. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God cannot deceive you. Believe that. He cannot 
deceive you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever prayer that we pray, it goes through Job chapter 13 verse 9. Therefore, we read Job chapter 13 verse 9. Will it be well with you when he searches you out? Or can you deceive him as one person deceives another? You cannot deceive God. And God will never deceive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we are going to reflect about family. One is which is the, uh, the basic unit God has created. All those who are married... Kindly you raise your hands? You have a husband, you have a wife. Okay, majority of you. Keep your hands down. I just wanted to say about my family, my parents, an important testimony. Uh, my father and my mother, my father is 98 years old. My mother is 88 years old. Hallelujah. They are still alive. They are 68 years in marriage. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I became a priest on their basically 50th wedding anniversary. Hallelujah. 50th. Thank you, Jesus. My three brothers are also priests. I'm the fourth priest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are, we are eight brothers and two sisters. As I told you, I'm the ninth born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my parents are great people. Now we read John chapter 8 verse 32. John 8 32. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Can we read it together louder? However, my parents are very holy, very blessed, great people. But the truth is that I have heard them, I have seen them fighting every day. <laughs> Not with word, not with hand, with words. Because my mother talks a lot, my father talks very little. My mother is highly, highly responsible. I have never found a woman like that. 24 hours thinking about the children and their thing. She does not want anyone to do anything without permission. Even to go to the toilet, I need permission. <laughs> But my father is Mr. Cool. Nothing affects him. <laughs> my mother called my father unmoved mover. In our language, we call ananga para. You know, someone <laughs> who never moves. Nothing affects. Nothing can affect him. Even if the whole earth is shaking, he will not shake. <laughs> this is what my mother found. So she is thinking... Why God has put someone just the opposite of my character? So she is doubting, is he the one whom God appointed? She is 88 years old. 68 years in marriage. Still she doubts, even last time <laughs> when I went for holidays. She is doubting because just the opposite. She many times said, whether it was a mistake <laughs> that there are so many people at least some similarity this man has no similarity at all the way she thinks the way she speaks the way she is responsible this man is just just the opposite now as a son i heard it many times one day i was reading the bible i came to know it was god's plan this is sirach chapter 33 Verse 15. We are going to read together. Sirach 33, 15. Look at all the works of the Most High. Can we read together? Look at all the works of the Most High. They come in pairs. One the opposite of the other. See? Look at all the works of the Most High. They come as a husband and wife. One the opposite of the other. What to do? Again, we read in Sirach chapter 42, 24. Sirach 42, 24. All things come in pairs, one opposite the other. And he made nothing incomplete. 
all things come as a husband and wife as a pair one opposite the other and he has made nothing incomplete then we read verse 25 each supplements each supplements the virtues of the other who could ever tire of seeing his glory each supplements the virtues of the other so it is to supplement to complement each other my dear sisters and brothers you know uh, my mother talks 24 hours <laughs> if my father also was i had had a habit of talking 24 hours as a child i will not stop talking 48 hours <laughs> but now this is 1 corinthians chapter 7 verse 14 1 corinthians 7:14 the unbelieving husband is made holy through the wife. Can we read? For the unbelieving husband is made holy through his wife. And the unbelieving wife is made holy through her husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean. But as it is they are holy. Otherwise your children would be unclean. Your husband is not a mistake. This was the same man God has appointed for you. So smile, please. <laughs> stop doubting. Stop thinking. Stop questioning. This is the same wife God has prepared for you eternally. And you know it happened? Tobit 8.6. Before you were born, God has set apart this same man. This is God's plan. This is God's plan that you should have this particular person. This is not a mistake. This is not by chance. It's not an accident. Today, uh, together we read, you made Adam, for him you made his wife Eve, as a helper and support. From the two of them, the human race was sprung. You said, it's not good that the man should be alone. Let us make a helper for him like himself, so this life partner is an eternal plan of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, my father and my mother, they were, uh, they, were, they were not the same. They were different. They were not the same. So I call my mother. Sometimes I call and I ask her, do you fight with my father? <laughs> then he, then he, she tells me, my son, now I am very old. That means if she was young, she could have fought. <laughs> and then she tells me, my son, you know very well about your dad. How can you live with this man without fighting? <laughs> that is her theory. But I want to tell you, this father and mother gave birth to four priests. Let no one misguide you. Hallelujah. They gave birth to four priests. They are great people. Maybe I say the best people at present living on earth are my parents. Hallelujah. They are great people. Hallelujah. Don't clap the hands, but still they fight. <laughs> that is why Jesus himself said, marriage is a mystery. It's not because two people have the same mind. They never fight. They have this love. The family will work. No, we are different. You have to agree that maybe you think that if you change this man, change this woman, you'd have more peace. No, this is God's plan that you have to complement each other. You need to save one another. 1 Corinthians 7 16, we read the purpose of marriage is salvation of a soul. Together, we read, Wife, for all you know, you might save your husband. Husband, for all you know, you and might you save your you. wife. So the call, the vocation, that's why we call marriage as a vocation. It is a call. It's like a priesthood. Marriage is a vocation. You cannot just uh, remove the, the point vocation from marriage. Then it is just a living together. It is a sacrament to save a soul. To save somebody who is being lost. That is why... I heard a priest preaching, if you are a very prayerful, uh, dedicated woman, you go to church, God has prepared a beautiful gift for you. The gift is in the form of a man who will be a drunkard, who will never go to church, who will beat you up and down. Because only a prayerful, believing woman who can save a 
lost soul, a drunkard soul, a soul who has not believing in God. That such great is the faith God put in a believing woman. That's why Monica was given Patricius, who was a pagan and unbeliever. God believed that this Monica has the grace to save this man's soul. So it is not a mistake. This priest said, if you are a very prayerful man, go into church. You are really focused on God. God has prepared a gift of a woman who talks 24 hours. <laughs> and because you alone can save this woman. That is the mystery of marriage. So let me tell you how my parents, though they are different in character, how do they survive? You know, marriage cannot survive because you have a PhD, because you have big knowledge, because you have a huge job, because you have a lot of money. Let no one misguide us. This is Wisdom chapter 1, verse 7. The only thing that is common in a man, in a woman, who is born of different parents, different history, different background, different language sometimes, different nationality sometimes, how can a man and a woman be connected? Because the Spirit of the Lord has filled the world, and that which holds all things together knows what he said. Because the Holy Spirit who fills the man and the woman, the Holy Spirit is the one same in two people, not anything else. No idea, no knowledge, no education, no wealth can connect a man and a woman together in marriage. It is the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the most important part of a marriage for its success is prayer. Prayer alone. That's why in Sirach chapter 27 verse 3 we read. Sirach chapter 27 verse 3. If one is not, if a person is not steadfast in the fear of the Lord, his house will be quickly overthrown. Can we read together? If a person is not steadfast in the fear of the Lord, his house will be quickly overthrown. That means if a family does not pray together, it cannot stay together. My parents, I know, every day, 7.30 to 8.30 in the night, morning from 5. Morning they pray together, evening they pray with all the children. 7.30 to 8.30, every day, every day there is family prayer. With Holy Rosary, reading of the Bible, praying the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy, praying the Sacred Heart Rosary, they have all these prayers. Every day, 7.30 to 8.30, one hour, there is prayer. Now I am in Rwanda. It is three and a half hours behind India. Whenever I take the phone to call, I must check the time. They will never attend in my home. My parents, my siblings, they never attend their phone if it is 7.30 to 8.30 because that's the time of prayer. Since the day I am born, I have always seen, I have not seen or noticed any day they missed family prayer because they both knew. My father is class 5, my mother is class 8. Poor ordinary people. They knew one thing, God is everything. Prayer is everything. After all, whatever fight they have, whatever differences they have, whatever difficulties they have, they come together, pray together with the children. They are very strict. The one thing my father was very strict is the prayer. He cannot tolerate children are not praying together. He will force. I was very angry when I was small. I did not know the purpose. My parents knew that. That prayer made four children priest that made this different couple to live together because of if they were not praying together they could have thought better us better to part ways but they held on to the marriage because of god praise the lord praise because the lord. of prayer praise the lord praise the lord let no one misguide us you, you you have to know your parents were more poor your parents were more poor do you agree with me yes but they never thought, not even one time they said the word, divorce, separation. Some of us say every time, once in a month or thrice in a month, divorce, separation. They never said that. They were more poor. They depended on God more than us. They depended on God in prayer. Even today, even today in this 2024, no marriage can work without prayer. 
you look at any family that is separated or thinking of separation or any divorce, the reason is no family prayer. Let no one misguide you. You ask two, three questions to a couple who have problem. One single question the Holy Spirit wants us to ask, do you have family prayer? Then we have many excuses. Our job is in a different time. My wife's job is in a different time. We are not coming together. We have night duty and sisters and brothers. This is Psalm 127 verse 1. Let this word of God enter inside you. The scripture says, If the Lord is not building the house, the builders build it in vain. Without a prayer, you cannot build a house. Psalm 127 verse 1. Psalm 127 verse 7. Let's, verse 1, let's read together. Unless, Unless the Lord, Lord builds the house, the house those who build it labor in vain, Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. Praise the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house. That means we, when we pray, we are asking the Lord to build your house. When you are praying together, you are asking the Lord to keep guard my house. So that our children are protected. So that our family is protected. Without family prayer. In the book of Judith, they say there is a prefiguration about Blessed Virgin Mary. Judith chapter 16, verse 4. Judith chapter 16, verse 4. Were this king Nebuchadnezzar, he is threatening, he boasted. Can we read it together? He, he boasted, boasted that he, he would burn up my territory and kill my young men with the sword and dash my infants to the ground and seize my children as booty and take my virgins as spoil. He boasted, who devil is boasting every day, every moment, that I would burn up my territory, that he is going to destroy this Australia, this territory. Kill my young man with the sword. How the devil is going to kill the young man? The sword symbolizes different types of things. It can be alcohol, it can be pornography, it can be drugs, it can be wrong relationship, wrong conviction, unbelief. I will kill young men. Devil is boasting. And dash my infants to the ground. That the devil is boasting. I will cause abortion. I am going to remove the children from the womb. And seize my children as booty. I am going to make children as captives. As victims. As slaves. To different type of things. Now there are many children who are addicted to games. These internet games. They are wasting a lot of time from morning to evening. They are spending a lot of time on the cell phone. They have become like his slaves to all these gadgets. Take my virgins as spoil. We live in a culture, in a situation, in a time where virginity has no value. That means there are a lot of sexual immorality going on. When they look at here and there, when they look at people, they find it is all right. Everybody does it. Everybody is involved in it. Devil is boasting. And we read, we continue. Judith chapter 16 verse 5 verse 5 but, but the Lord Almighty, Almighty has, has foiled, foiled them by the, by the hand, hand of a woman together but, but the, the Lord, Lord Almighty, Almighty has foiled them by the hand of a woman and here symbolically there it is Judith but symbolically it is by the hand of blessed virgin Mary hallelujah, hallelujah. so those family that pray the rosary Holding on to Blessed Virgin Mary. Those families overcome any storm coming against it. Those families, those children will prosper. My father is class 8. My mother is class 5. Let me repeat it again. They are ordinary people. Then how their children are blessed? Because they held on to prayer. There is no other reason. Sisters and brothers, if my parents and if we all stand here in front of you, you will be shocked because though we are born of the same parents, we are different in color, in height, in shape. Some are fat, some are thin. Some are tall, some are short. Some smile always, some never smile. Some get angry very fast, some never get angry. Came out of the same womb, same father, 10 children, 10 character. Without God, there is no unity. Without God, there is no similarity. Without God, nothing can work. 
we are different. Then what about a husband and a wife born of different parents, different history, different nationality, sometimes different language? Do you think it will naturally work? It cannot. Can it work because you are highly qualified? It cannot work. Can it work because you have a lot of money? It cannot work. Without God, it's not possible. Mark 10, 27 for mortals, it is impossible. But not for God. For God, all things are possible. Let's read together. Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals, it is impossible. But not for God. For God, all, all things, things are, are possible. possible. That is why, for God who made you and your partner as a family, for God, it is possible. That's why you need to hold on to God and tell God without you. In John 15, 5. I am the wine, you are the branches. You can do nothing apart from me. So when the parents, when my father and my mother, even when I was small, they are the first ones kneeling down. They are the first ones raising the hands. They are the first ones praying. So as a small little kid, I came to know, even my parents need God. They are nothing. They need God. They are kneeling down. They are raising the hands. So they get help from God. This is the way parents train the children. We all need our children to be the best. No parents wanted any harm to happen to the children. But you remember, the best gift you can give to your children is not the best education. Not everything, every kind of food. They need God. Everything will pass away. If as parents we fail to give them God, we have failed in everything I will say. We, are, we have given them nothing. It's not good education that matters. I had a retreat in Paris. Somebody came to help me basically to translate. He knows English, French, Dutch, Italian, even Latin. He's an expert. He told me, Father, I will help you in translation. You know that we need translation. I only speak English. It's French. So he came to the airport. He got permission, and he's talking to me. But he, he also need counseling. He told me his marriage broke out. Uh, this uh, broke up. His marriage broke up. It's in three months. It only stays three months. He's a CEO of a company. He has his own company. He has a lot of wealth. His father was a very influential person. He knows many languages. He knows many instruments. He told me, Father, I can at the same time play different instruments. He knows keyboard. He knows guitar. He knows this violin. So many instruments. And he's a very intelligent person. He's very good. But his heart is broken. He told me, my wife broke my heart. I told him, do you pray? He said, Father, I don't know how to pray. His parents sent him for music class, swimming on Sundays. They wanted him to get the best, but he failed because they failed to give him God. Let no one misguide you. You are in a very rich, beautiful, best country in the world called Australia. You may get best as parents. Sometimes you think, me, I never got a chance to swim. Let my children go and swim. I did not get a chance to, to ride on a horse, you know. So let my child go and climb on a horse and see how it is. <laughs> it's a good news about lunch. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please let us give children not the best of this world best of God. Hallelujah. I am truly from the bottom of my heart grateful to my parents. They were poor, ordinary, uneducated people. If two people after God, I kneel down and touch the feet, my parents, because they inserted inside me God. They gave me God. If they did not tell me God is important, I could not become a priest. Today, what is the wealth you give to your children? Now you may be trying. Somebody told me, Father, I did not get good food. Let my children eat. And I know that the child has problem of knee pain. You know why? His, his leg cannot hold his body. <laughs> what do we give to our children? 
God is more important than food. As a priest, I have learned people can live without food, but we cannot live without God. We are created for Him. Ruth Burroughs is a great author, spiritual person from Ireland. She wrote a beautiful book in the book she wrote like this. We as humans, we are half. We are half. We are just 50 percentage. We are not full. The people who are not married, they think if I get married, I will be full. But after they get married, they become less than 25 percentage. <laughs> they get worn out. And Ruth says, the other half. You know some people try alcohol because they, they are empty. Ruth says, God is the other half. No life can be. That's why St. Augustine, having experienced everything, having experienced alcohol, he lived with women, he involved in empty philosophy, having tried everything, Augustine made a statement, Oh God, you created me for yourself, and my soul will be restless until it rests in you. Anyone, if you look seriously and deeply, you understand your heart is thirsting for someone, something higher. And that someone, that something is none other than God. That's why I tell you again. Nobody forced you to come to Holy Family Dufton for this retreat. We did not force you. We did not drag you with a rope. Come, come. <laughs> Your God brought you here. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. John chapter 6 verse 44. No one can come to me unless my father draws one to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because you are the beloved child of the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father brought you here because he loves you he's never tired of you he's never angry with you he's never upset with you because you are his child hallelujah hallelujah you are not a slave you are not a servant you are his precious child praise the lord praise the lord decide today as a family you will pray with your children not when they as small as your children are you have to be the first one to pray. You know, many, many people, many children are upset. You know why? Because the children, the parents never give good example. One day, a husband and wife, you know, the parents brought to me a girl child. And they said, Father, this girl sometimes just leave this home. We don't know where she goes, what she does. We are very upset. Many times it happened. Then we go after, we search and search. Sometimes we find her with a friend's home, different, different places. Father, we are very upset how this girl behaves like this. As parents, at least she could tell us where she is going, what she is going on. She's just, sometimes we could even involve the police because she's found missing. So then I just uh, asked the parents, how is your life? Do you love each other? Do you fight? Then they said, we are good father. You know, the husband is telling, we are good. The wife is also telling, we are good. Then I looked at this girl. So the girl was in front. So the girl slowly went aside and went backward. And she's showing me. <laughs> Why this girl is running away? There is no peace in this house. It is for little peace this girl is running away. And now these parents are telling, yes, Father, we are good. Before whom? You cannot cheat children. One day a mother was beating. A mother, a, a brother and sister were fighting. Brother and sister are fighting. Mother brought a stick and beaten the girl. I told you never to fight. And then the turn is to the boy. The boy ran away. So this mother is running after this boy because she has already beaten the sister. So the sister also will be peace only when the brother is beaten. <laughs> so, so the mother is running after this boy. At the end, the mother caught this boy and said, I told you never to beat. Then the boy caught hold of the stick. So the mother cannot beat. The, boy, the mother said, leave the stick, I want to beat you. Then the boy said, don't beat me as you beat my dad. My dear sisters and brothers, this mother could not say anything. Why these children are beating? 
They have seen this from their parents. They are just imitating what they are doing. Do we have the credibility to correct our children? Do we have the authenticity as a dad, as a mom? If we say pray, pray, and we never pray, how can? This bad example is the confusion and the crisis in the young people. This is the confusion. My parents are very good in advising. They never practice what they say. Say, <laughs> so how do they follow that? And so they are confused. They say, many parents say, oh, Father, I don't know. My parents, my children are confused. The reason is so simple. They are confused. You know, many are not married. I have come to know, say, preach the shocking thing. Many girls, maybe they are 30 years, 38 years, 42 years. Many men, young men, 40 years, not married. If you ask them two, three questions, they say, Father, we don't have any faith in marriage because my parents are separated. I have found them fighting every day. We don't find any purpose in marriage because my parents never had a life of peace. Then why do I put myself into this terrible life? So I think better to be alone. Have you given that scandal, that bad example to your children? And you are just telling the children are not getting married. Do we, are we good examples? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sirach 25, 1 we read. God delights in three things. God delights. And we have to know, devil is the one who wanted to break marriage. I take pleasure together. I, I take, take pleasure in three, three things. things. And, and they are beautiful, beautiful in the, the sight, sight of God, of God and, and of mortals. mortals. Agreement among, among brothers and sisters, sisters friendship among neighbors, and a wife and a husband who live in harmony. A wife and a husband who live in harmony is a matter of great joy and pleasure before God. That is why devil wanted to crush it. Devil wanted to break an institution called marriage because it's God's institution. And he has no much problem with anything else. But marriage cannot tolerate Devil cannot tolerate. If we get married in the church, if we live together as a husband and wife, if we go together to the church, if you speak together, if you smile together, devil is crushing his heat, his teeth. He cannot tolerate because God takes delight in it. Praise the Lord. Praise my mother used to say, my son, how many things we have to shut our eyes. The interference of the in-laws, Many comments my mother told me. You know, my mother had no much people to share. So she will share serious things to us children. How many things we have to shut our eyes. You know, today only I understand. We have to be humble. She tells me humble, humility. And she told me the way her marriage is saved, she says, is always through the intervention. She always used to pray through the parish priest. The priest, you know, those days... Confession, counseling, everything is through the parish priest. There is no retreat like this. There is no one who comes and helps them. So my mother says, one day she had a very big problem with my father. She told me, so I don't know what to do. So I went to the priest because my father, though he does not drink, he is not so responsible. That is her problem. So for me, he is a very good man. But for a uh, mother for a wife is very difficult. And I came to know my father had a very good character. He was very good with the children. He was like a lion to the mother. <laughs> Some people are like that. They are very good outside. In the house, they are like a barking lion. Some are like that. If you are like that, don't raise your hand, hide yourself, <laughs> and change your character. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this is Sirach chapter 4. 4, 4 verse 30. Sirach chapter 4 verse 30. Sirach chapter 4 verse 30. Can we read it together? Do not be like a lion in your home or suspicious of yourself. Read that first part. Do, Do not, not be, be like a lion in your home. That is, that is to be repeated three times by all men. <laughs> Can we read together? Do not be like a lion in your home. Do not, Do not be like, like a lion in your home. Do not, not be like, like a lion in your home. Thank you for repeating. 
sisters and brothers, my mother told me, one day she felt very upset what to do. She does not know how to face a situation. My father got angry with her. She went and she spoke with the parish priest. You know, for them, confession, counseling, everything happens in that morning. Before the mass, the priest is in the confessional. My mother told me, after the confession, she just cried before the priest and said what to do. The priest told her, my sister, don't be sad. You will have blessing from God and blessing from your children. Forgive your husband, my sister. You will have blessings from God, blessings from your children. Forgive your husband, she said. My mother said, peace endured inside me. After all, my God is going to bless me. After all, my children have never hurt me, never disobeyed me. Okay, let me forgive, she said. I forgive. And then, as if nothing happened, it went out. Again, something happens. <laughs> then I go, I speak, he tells me something. My father also had this same thing. Whenever he has a problem with my wife, with my mother, he goes to the priest, speak, and the priest just, just tell him, forgive your wife. After all, she left everything, her home, her parents. If you hurt her, who is going to support? Then my father will think, okay, at least this time I forgive. So he forgave that one time. Then it went on for three months. Again, they get hurt. They go back. They be reconciled. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let no one misguide us. We are humans. We are jesting. We are being hurt. And we are hurting others. So what we need to do? Ask God to help us. Use the things that God has given us to help. It will not naturally happen. Marriage cannot naturally happen is a supernatural call. That's why Jesus said, this is gospel of Matthew chapter 19 about marriage. Jesus said, 1911, Jesus said the command about marriage together. And he said to them, not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those to whom it is given. Only to those whom grace is given. They can understand the secret of marriage life. Imagine if my parents were separated. If they got divorced, I can never become a priest. Four of us can never become a priest. Because of huge differences, then they decide, okay, better for us to go separate. Let us not live together. They never decided like that. They just attributed everything to God. Prophet Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. My parents lived in a family not by might, nor by power, but by the Holy Spirit through prayer. Decide today that you will have family prayer. Maybe you have your problem is job. Remove that job. Job is not the important thing. You need your family. Is your family or your work which is more important? If you come to know your marriage is going to break, still you hold on to your job? Many of us, that's why yesterday we have seen, love of money is the root of all evil. Because of that, some people have put priority into their job. Some people say, you know, we all love God. Do you love God? Yes. Those who love God so much, lift your hands. I'm not going to put you into trouble. Every question has its consequence. Jesus appeared to a boy. I heard this story. I said this story before. Jesus appeared to a boy and Jesus told him, my son, you know, this boy loves Jesus. So, Jesus asked this boy, write the names of 30 people whom you love the most. I want to see that list. I will come after 10 days. The boy became very happy. He pre prepared the list. 10 days later, Jesus appeared. And Jesus asked, did you prepare the list? Then the boy said, Jesus, you see, I have so many friends. Because you told me 30 people, it was a very big problem for me to reduce the list into 
30 people. Because you said only 30 people, I managed to put it 30 people. Then Jesus asked him, so my son, am I there in that list? Then he put his hand on his head, oh my God, I missed that. <laughs> we say, we love him, but if he asks him to make a list, what comes first? The problem is Sirach chapter 42 verse 20. Sirach chapter 42 verse 20. No thought escapes him and nothing is hidden from him. Then why we miss Sunday Mass? Why we go for job? Why we give priority to money? When somebody says, I will give you some gift, why do we run for that party? Even missing Holy Mass, missing Sunday Mass. And it happens unknowingly because our friends go for that. Our people go for that. Our relatives have called us. Let God be God in our life. Our children should learn this. What does my dad give priority? You know, I heard this story. One day, one child uh, asked, the, asked the dad, Dad, he's asking, what is the gift I can give? The, the child said, I need your time. Then the child, I have heard in the story, the child gave him $20 saying, give me two hours. Give me your two hours. The child knows my dad has no time at all because it's all about money, job, for whom that we are working. Many families are broken, especially in this modern country. Why families are breaking apart? Why our children have perversions? Why our children are introvert? Why the children are always found with the pawn? Because the parents have no time even to play a game with them, to go out for a walking, to smile together, to crack jokes, to say some stories, to speak about the Bible. We have no time to share, no time to talk, no time to behave together or to have a game together. Then the children feel the only thing that they can use is the cell phone and eventually they are hooked by it. They are. And we are then lamenting. Sirach 41.7 we read. Sirach chapter 41 verse 17. The word of God says. 7. Sirach 41.7 Children will blame an ungodly father for they suffer disgrace because of him. Once again. Children will blame an ungodly father. For they suffer disgrace because of him. Most of the time children are going through struggle because as the father, as a mother, are we really godly, prayerful, holy? We know as the parents need best for their children. And the parents must pray First one to pray. Take the rosary. Lift up unto the Lord. And God is going to intervene. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that is for the parents. But the children also have to obey what the parents say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The children are hiding in between. <laughs> and you have to know, my father used to beat me when I was small. My father also beat. My mother also. Only for one thing my father will beat for prayer. If I don't go for prayer, he will beat. One day I told my father, 7.30 is the time of prayer. I told my father, I have some headache. Then my father asked me, do you really have headache? I said, I think so. Then he told me, if you have headache, you, I will give you a medicine. Then I said, no, I, if I sleep, it will be okay. Let me go and sleep. He said, no, if you have really headache, I will give you a medicine. So I told him that... Uh, I think sleeping is enough. You know, this is 7.30, the time of prayer. He again asked, do you really have a headache? I said, I think so. He went inside. He brought the medicine. His one hand was behind, <laughs> like this. Again he asked, do you still have a headache? I said, I think. He took the medicine out. A long, big stick. <laughs> he had beaten me thoroughly and he told me, go kneel down and pray. I went and prayed. Sisters and brothers, 
I got many sicknesses in my life, but never I had headache in my life. <laughs> because my father gave me the exact medicine at the exact time. I thank God because my father is an Indian. If he was here, he may be in the prison until today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When I go for holidays, sometimes I tell my dad, please come, beat me. <laughs> that made me a priest today. Later I came to know what my dad did was exactly the word of God. This is Sirach chapter 30 verse 11. Sirach chapter 30 verse 11. 11. It was right and just. Can we read it together? Yes. Give him no freedom in his youth and do not ignore his errors. See the word of God says, give no freedom to a child in his youth and do not ignore his errors. We continue. Bow down his neck in his youth and beat his sides while he is young. Or, or else he will become stubborn and disobey you. And, and you will have sorrow of soul from, from him. him. Beat his sides while he is young. This is word of God. That's why I honor my parents. They beat me. That's why I'm a priest today. You know that uh, in India, everybody goes for movies, cinemas, films. My friends will go and tell the story. I was very angry with them. I was never permitted to watch any movie and even until class 10. You, you know, my friends all go. I could not go because of fear. I will get beating. More, none of my friends became priests. <laughs> they watched the movie. They went uh, for outing, picnic. I could not. Beat his sides while he is young. Give no freedom. This is the word of God. Why? Sisters and brothers, when I am youth, when I am young, when I am a teenager, if I had all the freedom, I could have gone astray. I did not know why I pray. I did not know why I kneel down. I did not know why I lift my hand. I did not know why I pray the rosary. My parents knew that. Without God, my children cannot be helped. They knew in their experience, in their age, they knew the only one thing that can help our children is discipline Hallelujah. and prayer. That is why they were strict. And this is biblical because God has given authority to the parents, to the children. That is why sometimes when we are in a new culture, in a new system, we think now we cannot just do anything to the children. Sisters and brothers, they need discipline. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. We have already seen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. Every, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. It is, it is not lawful to discipline the children, to beat the children. But according to the law of God, it is from the Bible, it's not my making, word of God says. Sisters and brothers, Jesus is our example. He was the most intelligent person even at the age of 12. Jesus was the most intelligent person at the age of 12. He started to teach not at the age of 30. At the age of 12, he started to teach teachers in the temple. He was teaching the Pharisees. Such an intelligent person. Mother Mary and Joseph came and told, come, come. Tend is here. Why? Why are you doing this? Jesus did not keep do anything. He went quietly. <laughs> Lived in humility, in submission, in obedience to two human parents, Joseph and Mary. Remember, Joseph is a carpenter. Mary is a housewife. They, didn't, they don't know much. Only Jesus. Jesus knew everything. You know, today's children, they know Google. They know Wikipedia. They have big answers. They know everything. You know, the parents, maybe the answers, you say everything is foolish for them. They are highly intelligent. But Jesus, whom you love in your life, my dear children, he was the most intelligent. 
but he made himself extremely humble and low, submissive and obedient. Another 18 years, another 18 years, Jesus was not a, a free man when he was a teenager. He has to work hard with his father. He was obedient. That's why he is the supreme holy God. If anybody thinks, I have to be independent at the age of 18. You know, somebody told me, Father, I am waiting to be 18. I need to declare independence, not only for the country of Australia, <laughs> my personal independence. I will have my car, my license, my account, my life. I will decide what to do. Let no one misguide us. That is not a Christian way of life. We are all connected to one another. We have to be humble, obedient, and submissive. Many, many lives and marriages and families are breaking down because of this inordinate independence inside us. We think it's fine, but it's not approved by Bible. We have to be submissive. Hallelujah. 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 This is what the Lord is speaking us about discipline that we need in our children. Proverbs chapter 23, 13 and 14 we read. Proverbs 23. Can we read together? Do not, not withhold discipline, discipline from your children. children. If you, you beat, beat them with a rod, they will not die. die. If you, you beat, beat them with a rod, you will save, save their lives from Sheol. Sheol. You will save your children's life from hell. If you beat them in time, this is word of God. But we know when we are in this country, in this culture, we will say we cannot do that. Let me tell you, I am preaching only the Bible, the word of God. I am not talking against anyone. While I was in uh, UK, somebody told me, Father, you have to know the first thing you have to know in this country, the things you are not permitted to preach. So I said, what are those things? Then they told me many things in that country, they told me. Then I said, but uh, I understand this is a secular country. They said, yes, it's a secular country. Means you cannot force your religion on, on others. I said, okay, I'm not going to force, but I can practice my faith. So I will just say, those who wanted to hear, they can. I go to a petrol station and I tell the man, you know, Jesus is so good. They are shocked. Why do you talk about Jesus in this petrol pump? I said, no, I had an experience about Jesus. I know Jesus is so good. He is so kind to me. So he saved me. So he asked me, so for what? So I said, no, I was just sharing the goodness of Jesus. Then he said, don't you know that you cannot say this religion in this place? Then I tell, sir, I am very sorry. Forgive me. Please, I'm very sorry. I did not know. But I have already said about Jesus. For me, that's enough. <laughs> The next time when I went, he's so kind to me. <laughs> then I started to evangelize. I was traveling through the airport. I, I had my Benedictine cross, not this one, with that, uh, uh, the steel one, the metal one. So I keep it on my overcoat. You know, you have to remove the jacket. I keep it on the top of it. One policeman took, because it makes noise, so he said, he just took and he, he just said, what is this metal? He's just said, he took him, what is this metal? You know, I'm just, I took this. This is the crucifix. Who said, this is metal, this is my God. I kissed Jesus. <laughs> he died for me. He's my savior. You don't know about him. I know his name is Christian. You know, I have seen this. <laughs> this man, tears started to flow in his eyes. After some time, he just moved and he said, bless me, Father. I just <laughs> used that same metal, I blessed him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, Jesus did so much to us. We have to do that. We need to tell our children, children, if we are here, it's because of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's everything. Without him, we can't even breathe. I was paralyzed. My children, Jesus brought me. Sometimes the children say, this old story, mother, you are telling me four times. Again, you say with humility, my son, I have only this old story about Jesus. If he was not there, I, I don't know, will I ever come to Australia? I don't know how I came here. You just say the same story. They may not understand it now. 
I can say from my own brother's life. You know, I, we are 10 children. I have four brothers who got married. I was shocked. You know, when we were young, we did not like the way the parents prayed. But when uh, these days I visit to my parents, my brother's home, they do exactly the same my parents did. Hallelujah. Kneeling down, lifting the hands and praying. Hallelujah. It is transmitted. The faith Hallelujah. is transmitted. So let no one discourage you to discipline your children. Proverbs 13, 24. Proverbs 13, 24. Those who spare Bear the rod hate their children. But those, those who, who love, love them, them are, are diligent, diligent to, to discipline them. That is. Those who spare the rod hate their children. Do you hate your children? No. no. If you hate your children, that's the only time you don't correct. Some parents never say anything to the children. Never correct them. Never tell them this is wrong. This is right. You have to tell them because they don't know. You have to tell them, discipline them, my child, this is not the way you have to speak. This is not the way you have to behave. This is not the way you have to talk to a stranger, to a foreigner. Don't make fun of others. One day I, when I was small, I do remember one man who had a problem of the leg. He, had, he was lame, little lame. So I was, my mother was around. So I was mi uh, doing the mimicry. And it's like imitating, like that lame man, telling my mother will appreciate. You know, I am making fun. She took a huge stick. <laughs> he beat me as if I will become lame. <laughs> and she told, who are you to make fun of people? It's only God's mercy. You have two good legs. Hallelujah. Today, I thank my mother. I see different type of people. Me, I never make fun of anyone. I can never make a comment about anyone, their shape, their deformity. Any, I cannot do that because the moment I think my legs will sh <laughs> shiver because I know, I remember the beatings I received. In time, my mother took the stick, beat me. As a child, I am ignorant. My mother could also laugh with me. Make fun, say, my son, good, good. My mother did not do that. She knew it is wrong. Those who spare the rod hate their children. But those who love them are diligent to discipline them. This is God's word. Be diligent to discipline your children. They are ignorant. They may say they may know it. They are ignorant. You know, as a dad, as a mom, with your experience, you cannot hurt a human. You cannot make fun of a human. They are all created in the same image and in the likeness of God. So we kindly stand. Hallelujah. Sorry if I spoke too much. Beautiful. Thank you, Advice Father. Advice is not good. It's very Advice good, Father. Advice is not good. Somebody told me, Father, the only one thing I hate the most is too much advice. Even me, I don't like it. But what to do? This is the word of God. Somebody has to say it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you. No need to listen to a priest. Listen directly from the Bible so that you will not be surprised when you see something. It's already there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Jesus. Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Where else I go? Where else can I go? There is none like you. There is none like you. There is no one who can touch my heart as you do. There is no one who can touch my heart as you there do. There is no one who can wipe my tears. There is no one who can wipe my tears. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. People are tired of me. People are tired of they me. They avoid me. They avoid me. Though they don't say. Though they don't say. I can feel. I can feel. Many don't like me. Many don't like me. It's only you. It's only you. Who can tolerate me. Who can tolerate me. Jesus. Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you. That's why I come to you. I come to you. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. A new creation. A new creation. Jesus. Jesus. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life I to you. I give my heart to you. I give my heart to you. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 7. Can we read together? It's beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. Can we read it together? 
it is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed, is blessed by, by the, the superior so are you inferior or superior to jesus ah. so the scripture says it is beyond dispute that the inferior that we who are inferiors we are blessed by the superior that means when you receive the body and the blood of jesus your body becomes the body of jesus your blood becomes the blood of jesus any sickness i have found in my own eyes i'm a witness aids patients have been healed by the power of the eucharist hallelujah hallelujah there is nothing that is impossible for god we have a word of god this is from revelation chapter 12 verse 11 some people say father i am healed but i have a problem after the retreat after few weeks few months that sickness is coming back so these days though i attended many retreats i am afraid to give testimony because sometimes i feel it's only during that time of the retreat i am healed after it is slowly creeping back to me if you have some problem if you have any time thought like that we read revelation 12 11 revelation chapter 12 verse 11 actually i heard this testimony from a lay person this person was childless it is from new jersey this person was childless he prayed fasted and he got a child then he kept he, he prayed he attended the retreat in the retreat it was announced he is going to be blessed with a son he got to the son and he said uh, he did not give testimony every time priest will say give testimony he was ashamed had fear cannot speak to the people so he just kept it quiet then the child fell sick they took to hospital many things but there is no solution for that then one day he was praying is very prayerful and he got this word of god they have, but they, but they have, have conquered, conquered him, him by, by the blood of the, the lamb and, and by, by the, the word of, of their, their testimony. testimony for they, they did not cling to life even in the, the face, face of, of death, death. they conquered the evil one by the blood of the lamb and, the and by the word of, of their, their testimony. testimony you can overcome satan you can overcome his influence you can overcome his returning to your life by a word of testimony this lay preacher said and he said so i decided to give testimony that same day my son was healed praise the lord praise the lord because i gave glory to god i openly declared this child of mine is not my gift god's gift everything good comes from him let him receive all the glory and they will could not hold on to that he has to leave when you give glory to god you declare this property this child this incident belongs to god praise the lord now time is finished <laughs> we had uh, 15 healing masses we had so many messages announced but we could not testify so sometimes people think no these priests are just saying uh, this and that no me i believe praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord everything matters our jesus has eyes that are 10000 times brighter than the sun we had a retreat for children so we told children matthew 10:30 the word of god says even the number of your hairs are counted. counted we told the children there is no science no technology no medicine no one even the most brilliant person on earth can say how many hairs are there in your head <laughs> can you say can anybody say we ask these children one boy just lifted the hand i said do you know he said yes father i know he asked me how many hairs are there in your head he said father i have 3 million 28 140000 hairs i asked him how do you know that he said father for me i have no doubt if you have any doubt you can count and check <laughs> praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah 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 now we are going to speak about inner healing we are all wounded there is no one who is perfect everyone every time since 
before we are formed in the womb of our mother until today until this moment we are all wounded praise the lord praise the lord but we don't want to be ashamed or afraid because of wounds we have jesus who is also wounded we always ask this question who is the most uh, cruel animal in the forest do you know which is the most cruel animal lion one woman said loud my husband <laughs> people say hitler was known to be one of the most cruel but if he learn his history he was the most wounded he was rejected by his father he lost his mother it was his aunt who brought him up he was treated like a dog his father kicked him like a dog he was hiding under the table he learned under the street lights he suffered and his aunt was mentally sick she pulled his hair this boy called hitler he suffered and eventually he became a cruel person now as christians let me tell you we don't want to be afraid of wounds because our wounds are our strength because we have a healer who is the wounded healer 1 peter 2:24 by his wounds we are healed praise the lord praise the lord being wounded he became a healer hallelujah 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 and so there is healing is possible through jesus can we read it together he himself bore our, our sins, sins in his body on the cross, cross. so that, that free from, from sins we might live for righteousness by his wounds we have been healed. healed the very fact that jesus is wounded we have healing provided we come to jesus surrender our wounds and receive the healing from jesus christ hallelujah 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 i have heard i have learned this Uh, story this life of saint josephine bakita she is a saint from sudan from the dafa area uh, she was an uh, a slave she is bakita means good luck is an arabic name she has no name the slaves have no name no identity no land nothing she was a slave bakita one of the merchants from italy bought bakita as a slave and took her to italy she was a pagan she was not a christian she did not know anything about jesus she was born and brought up in sudan later this merchant because he lost his wife by while his wife was giving birth so in order to look after his baby he took a slave bakita from sudan to look after his baby in italy those days there were not many black people in italy now bakita reached italy to look after this girl newborn child this master later tried to abuse bakita mistreat her so bakita ran away from this house and when she ran she saw a big house that's a church she entered inside the church and inside the church when she entered there she found a big huge crucifix hanging at the middle of the church and you have to know those days in sudan slaves were hung on the cross so then she got frightened because even in italy she will be treated as a slave and she will be maybe hung to death so being frightened hiding in the church the parish priest ended there and the pre- parish priest found this black girl and asked why are you here she said my master is trying to abuse me so being frightened i ran away and i have come into this church then the priest said don't worry this is a this is church this house of god this is a place of prayer for all people don't worry you are safe you are protected here then bakita asked who is hanging on the cross who is this then the priest said this is our god then bakita asked how can this be god his hands are on the nails his feet are on the nails his heart is pierced he cannot help himself how can he be god he is not god almighty and all powerful this god cannot help himself in our place those who are hung on the cross are slaves then the priest said yes he is also a slave philippians chapter 2 was from 6 uh, from 7 philippians 2 from 7 he emptied himself and took the form of a 
slave. Philippians chapter 2 from 7. That means the priest explained Jesus was a slave. Then the priest explained to him, explained to Bakita uh, that Jesus himself, he was chapter 2 verse 7. Philippians chapter 2 verse 7. But emptied himself. Can we read it together? But emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. Actually, Jesus was in a human form. He was lower than a human. A slave means what? A servant of human. And the priest explained, kings are born in palace. Jesus is born in a manger. 30 silver coins is just the price of a slave. Kings ride on do horses. Jesus used a donkey. Kings never wash the feet. He washed the feet of his disciples. My dear sisters and brothers, the priest explained Jesus was a slave. Again the priest explained there was more than 5,480 wounds in the body of Jesus. Bakita, whenever somebody used to do a mistake, actually this Italian merchant was the fifth master. There were other four masters who were his, her masters in Sudan. Whenever somebody does a mistake, they will make Bakita to bend low like this. And they will beat her. And there was slaughter of wounds and blood used to come. They never used to stop until blood comes out. Bakita could not even sleep properly because she had wounds all over the body. Now the priest is telling there is someone who is wounded more than you. More than 5,480 wounds. Bakita started to look at Jesus. This is Psalm 34.5 and Bakita was healed. Bakita was healed. Together we read, everybody, together. Look to him and be radiant. So your faces shall never be ashamed. Together, louder, everyone. Look to him and be radiant. So your faces shall never be ashamed. I never understood the full meaning of this word of God until I looked at the life of Saint Josephine Bakita. She looked at the face of Jesus and her face became radiant and she never felt ashamed. Being a slave, she must feel ashamed. She should feel inadequate, self-hatred and self-pity. A slave has no identity, no dignity, no value of life. But her face became came radiant when she came to know she has a God who was lower than her, who was a slave like her, who suffered more than her, who had more than 5,480 wounds and she received healing. Today as you are here, no science, no technology, no medicine, no doctor, no idea can heal a human person. It's only when you look at Jesus, the wounded healer, your wound, your so-called wound that you suffer is already suffered by Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 we read. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 we read that he himself has suffered because he himself was tested together. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. There is no doctor who can help. Because he is not tested like us. Those who are suffered. They will have that compassion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers. Bakita. Being a slave, having no dignity. When she looked at Jesus, her life was changed. She joined the convent. She became a nun. She became a saint. She became a wounded healer. She never took revenge when I was small. We have so many story books, small story books with the pictures. We learn about saints in St. Therese of Child Jesus. Prophet Elijah, we have so many story books. One story book I got, not only about saints, about many different people. One story book I got was, the title was Fool and Devi. Fool and Devi, it's about a criminal who lived in the Chambal forest in the Madhya Pradesh in the North India. This is a woman who was a terrorist. 
because she was mistreated she was raped she was molested so she took a gun she was a woman she had an army she used to even shoot police she was such a terror so many people were afraid of fool and devi because of her background she became a criminal it's only after a lot of effort the police could catch her it's a story happened years back in india about fool and devi bakita had all the opportunity to become another fool and devi instead she became saint josephine bakita because she looked at the face of jesus and her face became radiant she got a meaning and purpose for her suffering and she became a profound healer today as you are seated here many of us blame our history our background our parents our situations but sisters and brothers no healing is possible until we look at jesus and surrender our life and our wounds get a purpose and a meaning hallelujah Amen. it was in kenya nairobi a, a young girl came and she said father bless me with my kids i saw two small girls with this girl and this girl is also very small around 20 years i asked her how old are you she said 20 years i asked her these are your children she said yes these are my children i got very angry you know some people can get children without marriage and i thought she is like that and i said do you know that you cannot have children without marriage marriage are you married she said no i am not married then i said how can you have children she said no father these are my adopted children I said, how can you adopt? You, how old? You are very young. What about your future? Who will marry you with these children? How can you do that? Then she told me, Father, me, I am helping these children. They call me mama. They call me mother. I am giving them an identity. I have a small job. I completed. I am graduated. I am doing my master's. But in this time, I can help these children. They have no one. They are orphans. Then I again asked, but how do you do that? Then she said, Father, even me, I am an orphan. God was so kind to me, so gracious. So I want to be kind to others. Then she told me, Father, I know you will never understand what I am doing because you are not an orphan. I told her, I'm very sorry. I'm very, very sorry for judging you. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, we read. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Together we read. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. When the Lord trains you, when the Lord gives you a wound, a suffering, it has a meaning. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher. The Lord God has given me the tongue of an orphan that I may know how to sustain the orphans with a word. She became a, a great instrument, an instrument of uh, protection because of the wounds she had. She surrendered it to the Lord. She tasted that goodness of the Lord and she became a mother to the motherless. She became a father to the fatherless. She gave an identity and dignity to the rejected people. Sisters and brothers, we are Christians. Never be ashamed. Never be afraid of the wounds that you have. These are our treasures. I, have, I am in Kigali in Rwanda. One day a lady called Miriel, she invited me for a prayer group to go and pray. I told her, I cannot just come. I need an invitation from the parish priest. She said, no, this is a prayer group. You have a chaplain. I will bring you the letter. So she brought me a letter to go and conduct a service in her prayer group. She is the founder of this prayer group, but a priest is in charge of, he's the chaplain. So I went there for the prayer group. First time I go to such a prayer group, there are many prayer groups. This prayer group, the speciality, this is a prayer group for all the childless couples. So when I went there, I saw way people pray so much, very powerful prayer, very anointed prayer. They sing beautifully. They do everything for the mass. It's a special. Every month they have this gathering. So I told her, I am very impressed the way these people pray. Are you also childless? She said, no, I have four children. Then she said, how did you start it? She said, I was childless. Nine years I suffered. I had no children. Four miscarriages. People started to accuse me. My husband's family said, maybe there is some kind of witchcraft or curse. Maybe some people are like this. I suffered. There was no one I could share my pain. 
one miscarriage after the other, being childless. You know, in Africa, being childless, it is like a kind of a curse, so people can even divorce you, separate you, having too many issues. She said, I went through this, I prayed, I fasted. I could never tell my problem to anyone. Nobody understands. I cannot tell this problem to a priest. He cannot understand because it is something different. Nobody could support me. But I prayed and fasted. I depended upon God and God blessed me. One day I was praying. Then the Lord asked me, my daughter, you know, now I have children. Then one day I was praying. Jesus told me, my daughter, what have you done with the pain and sorrow I have given you? What have you done with the pain and sorrow I have given you? Do you just want to move because you got the children? You just have to forget the pain I have given you? It is for you to produce fruit. Then, then she thought about the people who are still struggling with being childless. She started a group of four people. It became 20. Now it is 400 childless couples. And it's such a powerful prayer group. Some of them are already blessed with the children, but they don't want to leave the group because the prayer that they make is shaking heaven because their pain is the same. Their sorrow is the same. They understand each other. They cannot go anywhere. No one could understand them. And she said, this pain, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. Together we read, Who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have many volunteers here. I know definitely they all have a story, a life to share. God's mighty intervention. That is why sometimes even if they don't like, they have to be part of it. You cannot go back because such is the goodness of God in your life. Our problem, our problem, we forget it. Jesus asked this medial, what have you done with the pain, the suffering I have given you? Philippians chapter 1 verse 12, St. Paul says, Philippians chapter 1 verse 12, I want you to know together, I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel. Together, I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel. What happened to Bakita made her to be a great healing instrument in the hand of the Lord. This girl from Kenya, she became a mother to the motherless, being an orphan. This medial in Rwanda became a prayer group leader of childless couples by accepting what has happened to her, the pain that he, she suffered. So today as you are seated here, the wounds that you have, the pain that you have is not just for you, it's to heal many people. Hallelujah. One mama came, mother came and she said her son, her son is an alcoholic, a drug abuser, not going to church, misbehaving. She said, Father, I am so sad and depressed, I don't know what to do. The Lord told her, this is Isaiah chapter 54 verses 2, 54, 2, Isaiah 54, 2, enlarge the sight of your tent. And let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Do not hold back. Because of the issues, she was going back from the prayer. And Jesus was telling, enlarge the sight of your tent. Extend your tent. Not just pray for your son. Pray for all the children addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs. So that everyone who is affected receive a healing through your prayer pain. You are not just going to focus on your son. Get out of your son. Get out of your daughter. Get inside your prayer. Get inside your tent. All those who are going astray and you will bring profound fruit through the suffering that you have. We have this word of God in Sirach chapter 33 verse 18. Sirach 33 18. Sirach 33, 18. Sirach 
chapter 33 verse 18 can we read it together consider that i have not labored for myself alone but for all who seek instruction consider that i have not labored for myself alone all the sufferings and the pain that you go through is not just for you alone is for all those who seek instruction you cannot help an orphan if you are not an orphan you cannot help somebody who is a patient to help others if you are not a patient somebody told me a nurse told me from uk she said father i help you know she take and she got four times covid and she said i was the first victim of covid she said when i became a covid patient father nobody was there to help me then i decided let others never suffer like me so at that day i decided even if i'm going to lose life i will provide food medicine and support she got again covid she never withdrew consider that i have not labored for myself alone but for all who seek instruction hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody having severe back pain you are coming for the first time god is healing you from this back pain hallelujah Amen. also somebody having asthmatic problem you cannot be in a congested place when you don't have fresh air you have this problem god is also healing you from that problem forever now when you can go to any place any congested place god is going to set you free hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. my sisters and brothers how to receive inner healing maybe we are wounded in many different ways i want to tell you a healing in my life i'm born in a family of 10 children eight brothers two sisters i am the ninth born and now one priest prayed and told me father you have a problem of suppressed anger suppressed anger means you don't get angry always you suppress all your feelings but when a circumstance an opportunity comes you will just have anger uncontrollable you know when i was small i do remember in the school i got angry so i closed my eyes and hit my friend today <laughs> i am very sorry for that i could not control my anger i am very sorry but when you have suppressed anger many of us have this problem we are we smile so beautifully but when things go beyond we don't know what we do you know this is like suppressed anger we have like that many many behavioral problems and we need healing and healing is possible because jesus is the healer praise the lord yes. do you believe jesus can heal you yes those who believe that ah smile please there is no gone case keep down your hands in between let me tell you a small testimony you know we to become priest it takes 12 years 12 years to become a priest so some of us join at the age of after 15 years after the secondary school we join the seminary to become priest i had some friends we all joined some join after degree you know uh, after they become little old some join when they are young so we some of us joined at the age of 15 after the seminary so i had a friend of mine so we study 12 years means around 11 years we are together only one year we go for a regency a practical otherwise we all our formations are together 11 years so after becoming priest we are appointed we are sent in different places some in africa in india in europe in different places so one of my friends he was always in india then in different places me i was in africa so after another 10 years we came together for a retreat you know sometimes we go we have annual retreat we don't meet each other uh, because we are in different places different times we go to india so it's not easy to meet so after 10 years i came with my friend who was with me 11 years we became priest 10 years i was in another place he was in another place we came for a retreat in the same place in our general aid same place because we don't have enough room we were sharing the same room five days retreat after five days my friend is telling me antony i have observed something i asked him what he told me you are not the same so i told him that means i am better or worse 
uh, then he told me, uh, uh, Anthony, uh, you are better. Then I said, all glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. That small comment from him has a great impact in my life because Jesus can change people. He changed me. My friend said, who was with me 11 years, he knows who knows me in and out. My weaknesses, my imperfections, all my notorious activities, seeing everything. <laughs> now he is telling me, Anthony, there is a change. And I give that. If it is good, I give that to Jesus. If it is bad, I take it to myself and I say, I'm sorry. But I have found that Jesus can change. Believe it. I am changed. Not totally, we are humans. I am trying to change. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you are seated in front of this altar where great things will take place. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and reverse in the desert. I am about to do a new thing. Believe it. Jesus can do something new. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Age is not a matter for Jesus. Age is not a, at any time. Abraham was called in his old age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This day, 2 Corinthians 6 2. At an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. Now, history is not a problem for the Lord. Maybe you had a very bad background. History, nothing matters. Today, now, if you are willing to give your heart to Jesus, he will do something new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How to receive inner healing? I was told I had this problem of suppressed anger. So, uh, I think this is time, isn't it? Uh, ah, okay. 11.15. Very good. Praise the Lord. You know, this is Australia. In Africa, I can preach. There is no problem. Here, if I don't keep time, it will be a problem. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this priest told me, I have suppressed the anger. And he told me, Father, you sit before the blessed sacrament. You ask Jesus, he will reveal to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you that uh, I'm born in a family of 10 children. I'm the ninth born. When you are small, you wanted all the attention, all the love. You don't want anybody else to be loved. When you are a child, you are so selfish. I don't know about the children in Australia, but I was very selfish when I was small. So my mother used to beat me with a big stick. She will not beat anywhere. She will take me to the prayer room, make me kneel down, ask me to pray Hail Mary, then she will beat. <laughs> and I was always in enmity with my little sister. She is three years younger to me. Whenever I do, I, because when she is born, when I was the youngest, everybody loved me. When my sister has come, nobody wanted me. <laughs> You know, in a, I don't know every family, the last to born, everybody has a special love. If you are not the last to born, you don't have that much of attention. So I used to disturb my sister, pinch her body, pull her hair. So whenever I do something small, my sister will scream. My mother has no time. She has 10 children. She has to cook a lot of work. The only solution, come with a stick and beat me. <laughs> Sometimes I don't do anything to my sister. I just show like this, she will scream. The moment my mother hears his screaming, she will come with a stick to beat me. And when I am there in the prayer room, she will beat me. I cannot cry. If I cry loud, she will say, neighbors will hear. <laughs> she does not want the, the neighbors make any comment. So that means I can't even cry. I suppress my cry. So I can't get out from that room until she calls me. She tells me, kneel down and pray. If I get up, my sister is there at the door as the security. She will scream. Again, I will get beating. Suppress the anger. 
Sometimes my mother beats me having done nothing wrong. Most of the time I have done wrong. So I also wanted to beat my mother because I am innocent. But she is very big, I am very small. I can't do that. So I suppressed anger inside. So after some time my mother will call me from the kitchen, food is ready. When I hear food, I will forget everything, go and eat. But the wounds remain there. Food cannot heal inner wounds. I invited Jesus. There are seven steps to receive inner healing. First, invite Jesus into the present wound. For example, uh, those who have any empty seats beside you, any chair is there empty, crying, I am alone. Ra raise your hands. Ah, there is no more empty seats. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So now the first step to invite Jesus into the present crisis. For example, you don't know your past. Maybe you have anger. You have some kind of strange sicknesses. You have sorrow. You have inferiority complex. You feel lonely. You feel rejected. You have some kind of difficulty in your life. Invite Jesus into that present problem because your past is present before Jesus. It has a reason. Jesus knows. So invite Jesus the way you are. First. Two. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the root cause. The root cause. For everything there is a root cause. From where? Since when? With what incident? You started to behave like this. Two. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the root cause. Three. Forgive everyone who caused that pain. Forgive everyone who caused that sorrow, that pain. Four, praise and worship God for everything that has happened. Praise and worship God for everything that has happened. Sirach chapter 39, 15 to 17. Sirach 39, 15 to 17. Ascribe majesty to him and give thanks to him with praise, with songs on your lips and with harps. This is what you shall say in thanksgiving. All the works of the Lord are very good. Have you forgotten to read together? And whatever he commands will be done at the appointed time. No one can say what is this or why is that. For at the appointed time all such questions will be answered. At his word the water stood in a heap and the reservoirs of water at the word of his mouth. No one can say what is this or why is that. For the appointed time all such questions will be answered. So what we have to do? Verse 7, 16. We have to say every wound, every pain, every sorrow that happened to us are very good. And whatever he commands will be done at the appointed time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am wounded. And Jesus healed me. It's good that I am wounded. It's good that I am healed. That's why I can teach you about it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is why all the works of the Lord are very good. And whatever he commands will be done at the appointed time. So the fourth step is what? Praise and thank the Lord for every sorrow, every pain, every rejection you felt in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fifth, ask the blood of Jesus to purify you. We read in the book of, this is Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Chapter 9 and 14. Can we read together? How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? The blood of Jesus has the power to purify your conscience, your inner wounds, your hidden secret pains. So the fifth step, invite the blood of Jesus 
to wash that wound. Sixth step, ask the Holy Spirit to take over your life, to fill you with all the gifts, fruits, and charisms. Every sin is a fallen virtue. When Holy Spirit comes, He comes with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, self-control, goodness, modesty, chastity. Don't write it down. <laughs> so, invite the Holy Spirit. Then the seventh step, ask Abba Father, to be your father. Ask Abba Father to be your father. Psalm 103 verse 13. Psalm 103 verse 13. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Praise the Lord. Praise One. Invite Jesus the way you are into your current problem. Two. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you the root cause. Three, forgive everyone who caused this pain. Mark 11, 25. Forgive when you pray. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. So that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Then give praise and thanks to God. Ask the blood of Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Heavenly Father. And you will become a new creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I invited Jesus. When I was, it happened when I was around six years old. I was sitting in that prayer room, keeping my head down and praying and crying, crying. I asked Jesus to come to me, sitting before the sacrament. As I am a priest, I did this inner healing after I became a priest. I sat before Jesus. I invited Jesus into my problem of suppressed anger. And I got the vision that I was that six-year-old boy in that prayer room, crying, keeping my head down. And I saw a vision of Jesus coming to that room of my same age, six year old Jesus came. He sat beside me. He kept his hand on my shoulders. And I heard him crying the same way I am crying. So I asked, did my mother also beat you? <laughs> but he cried, sisters and brothers, I have never seen someone like Jesus. There is none like you. He's the next song. So there is none like Jesus. Sisters and brothers, you go for a funeral. You find your friend is in sorrow. No word can console that person. But if you cry with that person, that sorrow is transmitted to you. You are free. I stopped crying because Jesus cried with me. He wiped away that tears and he inspired me to be humble, to forgive and bless my mom. And I became a new person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 56, 8. Psalm 56, 8 we read. The word of God says, I have kept count of your tossings and I have collected t tears in your, in my bottle. Are they not in your record? Can we read it together? Praise the Lord. The families with the kids below five is advised. If you go to the small hall, if you need directions, please see the volunteers. Parents with kids below five years will get special assistance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have inner wounds, there are three problems. The first thing, inner wound will block us to do good. You know, sometimes we take it lightly. You know, we have a tendency to hide. We think, why I open it up? It's better that I suffer like this. It's better I, I, I just die like this. You know, some people say, Father, you know, I have this problem of short-tempered nature. Uh, you know, people have to understand me. I'm like this. A Christian cannot say, I have this problem of committing sin, so tolerate with me with this sin. <laughs> A husband cannot say, uh, after all these years, you don't know I get angry very fast. A husband who says like that, is saying, no, I don't want to become a true Christian. You cannot just tolerate your weaknesses saying, it's okay, I'm like this. 
we have to be kind and charitable you have to behave in a better way you have to become a saint you cannot just say oh, i am like this what is the problem of being like this no that is not a true christian attitude praise the lord praise the lord inner wounds block you to do good romans 7:15 romans 7:15 can we read it together i do not understand my own actions for i do not do what i want but i do the very thing i hate this is the inner wound i if if you ever say you know even for me i know i hate sin but i understand i fall back into the sin then i understand i need deliverance i need inner healing is rooted in a sin that means inner wounds can block you to do good ephesians 2:10 ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are what he has made us uh, everybody has to read loud this is the last opportunity to read the retreat is going to end today the word of god will not be displayed like this this is the last opportunity kindly read loud for, for we, we are, are what he has, has made, made us created in christ, christ jesus, jesus for, for good works which, which god, god prepared beforehand to be our way, way of life in our wounds like rejection sorrow shame loneliness inferiority complex self pity self hatred abandonment these small small things you may think it's okay but fear will block you to do good rejection will block you to do good sorrow how can paralyze you that's why we need inner wounds don't take any of your behavioral patterns your negative thinking just to dominate you thinking it's okay it's fine i have this problem of sensitive nature i feel hurt for small things don't take it for granted you need healing jesus can heal you praise the lord praise the lord somebody who is suffering from arthritis for long years you cannot even do your daily walk god is healing someone who is that person thank you holy spirit who is that person god is healing you healing you from that hallelujah. hallelujah somebody also with a thyroid related problem and with this your whole body is affected you have hormone imbalance somebody is suffering from that god is healing you praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord the second problem with in a wound is that it will lead you to sin if you are not getting healing it can lead you to sin hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 hebrews 12:15 see to it please read together see, see to, to it, it that no one fails to obtain the grace of god that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and through it many become defiled cain murdered abel not on the same day root of bitterness grew inside him see that you may have your brother your sister may be living in australia but you don't even communicate you live like enemies you are came from the same womb you are blood relatives but still you cannot reconcile the inner wound of bitterness is destroying your life leading you to sin that's why inner healing is very crucial for a spiritual growth hallelujah hallelujah the for the third problem what inner wounds will do it will create bondages form bad habits see alcoholism adultery gambling there are some people they cannot get out of the habit they have maybe addiction to pornography impure arts they are addicted they are victims they are a slave to these things why they have not been removed these root causes that is why in the inner healing we read in the gospel of matthew this is chapter 15 was 13 matthew 15 13 is what happens in the inner healing can we read it together he answered every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted in the inner healing this is what happened we are all wounded even me i was wounded still i am getting wounded until death we cannot take it for granted just because i attended an inner healing retreat i am healed no 
we need in a healing this is possible only with jesus hebrews 13:8 this statement cannot be said about anyone anything he is the same yesterday today and forever our past is present before jesus our wounds are visible before jesus he knows the root cause he knows how to remove it how to do something new hallelujah hallelujah because there is none like Jesus kindly we stand there is none like you Jesus. there is no one who is like Jesus who can set me free heal me recreate me it can be a wound from our childhood a rejection from our father maybe your dad abandoned your mother maybe you became an orphan as small as you are maybe you are rejected by your own siblings maybe you are being brought up by your aunt your uncle or your grandmother it all matters a small baby must be brought up by his own or her own biological mother not grandmother not stepmother not uncle or aunt these are all wounds of emptiness don't worry isaiah 66:13 as a mother has compassion on the child you will i will have compassion can a mother forget to a nursing child jesus said even if she forgets i will not so you are in the best place where jesus becomes your healer hallelujah hallelujah we sing and there is also some tea coffee something okay It, these are all provided by god